Hello, it's March 13th, the afternoon of March 13th, 2020. President Trump has just declared a national emergency regarding the coronavirus. And um, we're doing a special episode today. We've assembled a few attorneys from our firm. We're getting a lot of questions from employers across the state of California, what their legal obligations are um, during this time. And actually this morning, LAUSD just announced that the schools are closed uh, next week, at least next week, potentially longer. It might even be for two weeks. So um, how are employers dealing with these issues that are coming up with the coronavirus? And uh, we have our attorneys here, Ann McWilliams, Rick Reyes, and Mike Thompson, to talk about a few of the issues and some of the questions we're getting a lot on uh, what employers are doing to deal with um, some of the issues coming up in, the, uh, in this context. Um, so first, I wanted to start out with the school closure with the LAS the LAUSD announcement, Mike, and I'll throw the, this question to you. What are um, employers' obligations um, created by the, the school closures coming up here next week? Well, thank you, Anthony. So under the Labor Code, Section 230.8, uh, any employer with 25 or more employees has to provide their employees uh, up to 40 hours each year to take care of certain school activities, including a school emergency such as a closure or a natural disaster. So uh, if the employee gives notice, then they can use up to 40 hours a year without being retaliated or, or discriminated against. So I think you're going to see a lot of that with this, and I imagine there's going to be even more school closings and people otherwise looking for child care to fill child care needs. And so employers need to be aware of and give that kind of space for their employees. Yep, yep. No, that's a good point. Um, and we're getting the question a lot, too. What if the... What if an employee does not want to come to work? They don't have any symptoms, but they're they're scared about coming to work uh, out of fear of contracting the virus. What are the employer's obligations in that regard? And uh, I'll throw that out, and primarily Rick, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. The, the short answer is no, you don't have to require them. They don't. You don't have to allow them to stay at work unless it's an actual issue of safety specifically in the workplace under the California Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which requires the employer to provide um, a safety um, workplace and to protect the workforce. But unless something like that rises to that level, then the employees, you know, they don't have to, the employer doesn't have to allow the employees to not come to work. Okay. Yep. You could offer them the option if it if it works with your business operations, you know, to work from home, if that's an option, and certainly if they're if they're sick, you probably want would want to encourage them to go home. And if they're definitely exhibiting any sort of respiratory symptoms, uh, you you probably would tell them, you know, you need to go home yeah. to protect everybody else in the workplace. And that's workplace. a good point. And we're getting the question a lot too. What can employers do? Can employers ask employees if they have? the coronavirus and what rights do the employee or the employers have in regards to asking about medical information of the employees? You want to be a little um, cautious with that and not ask too specific questions. Um, you know, do you have the CB19, but ask some more general questions about maybe some of the type of um, symptoms they have. I mean, um, generally speaking, Cal uh, Oshawa, you know, also has some um, guidelines that the an employer does have to protect the workforce against uh, airborne infections. So there is a, a good cause and a good reason to be able to ask these general questions of your employees. Yeah. And what if the employee denies having any symptoms but then comes into work and is sick? Does the employer have the right to send that employee home then? I think if the even if the employee is denying it and you're observing the symptoms, I think you should send him yeah, and I think the employer does have that right to regulate the workplace, protect the other employees in the workplace, protect customers, um, and make that call uh, to send them home. Although I would maybe recommend first kind of re-engaging with the employee when they're at work and you know asking if they're feeling well and if they maybe want to volunteer to go home. Because keep in mind, if you are sending them home, you know you may have reporting time obligations. If, you, if they don't work half their scheduled shift. So keep that in mind. Yep, yep. No, that's a good point on the reporting time. 
Um, and in regards to paid sick leave, um, we're hearing the question a lot too, or the warning, we're giving the warning out to employers a lot that you can't require the employee to use paid sick leave um, at all. But you can force the employee to go home if they're exhib exhibiting symptoms. But uh, if they don't want to use the paid sick leave, you can't force them to use the paid sick leave. It would just be unpaid time off if the employee doesn't want to use the paid sick leave. Did you have another comment on that, Rick, at all? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a good reminder, too, that if, employee, if employees do opt to take some time off under the paid sick leave laws, um, that the employers cannot retaliate in any form or way for an employee to use this time off. And it's also good for employers to remember the, of, um, the applicable um, ordinances in certain cities like Los Angeles, San Diego, um, that provide even more benefits under paid sick leave yep. than the general California law. Yep. In San Francisco, I just saw city of San Francisco has a FAQ out on the coronavirus uh, as well. So employers in San Francisco should check out the city's FAQ on that issue. Um, and it's also a good reminder that employees taking time off to care for others, other family members or others, other people covered by the act can use paid sick leave time to take care of others. And in addition, California employers are governed by the KinCare law. If an employer provides more paid sick leave than a state local ordinance, um, the uh, paid sick leave time off, half of that time can be used to take care of uh, family members as well when the employee's out. So it's not even just the employee's sick illness, it's whether they're caring for others as well under those laws. Um, we're getting the question a lot too, uh, masks in the workplace. Um, can, uh, what if an employee asks to wear a mask in the workplace, can an employer refuse the employee's request? So that is a very interesting question. Um, the, the, the short answer to that is that the employers are not legally required to permit employees to wear masks. Now, there's a lot of confusion as to whether this is a, um, you know, a good business decision. Uh, but from what we know is that people who are infected with the virus, it, it, it's usually not transmitted by, you know, by, uh, being exposed to a person just in in the in the presence of it is mostly a, a contact type of, of disease, so it is not really necessary for employees who wear masks or, or anything like that. So the employer is not legally required to to allow employees to wear one. Okay, and I think it's important too. It depends on the circumstances, obviously. If you if you're in a hospital or right. a place like that higher risk, um, uh, high contact with the public, things like that. It could totally depend on those circumstances. Yeah, of course. Obviously, if you're in the healthcare industry and you're treating patients who, who have contracted the virus, in those instances, of course, it, it makes more sense to be wearing a mask. But if you're, you know, if you're in, a, in an office setting, it would be less likely or less warranted for an employee to be wearing a mask. And you yeah. probably wouldn't want your server at the restaurant coming to your table with a mask on either, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, it, you know, a case by case scenario. So it's kind of the public, you know, if they're interacting with public the restaurant, is that going to be disruptive to kind of the environment and the overall, um, uh, I don't know, the, yeah, the ambience of the restaurant versus, you know, somebody in a, in a office that doesn't have any public facing um, contact and if they wanted to wear a mask there wouldn't be a whole lot of business reason to say no in that case so I think it really depends on the circumstances and look at that but that's um, good points uh, Rick and then Mike I wanted to ask too about you know some um, in regards to OSHA about cleaning and testing employees do you have any thoughts on that we're getting some general questions from from clients on those issues as well yeah I think you want to keep in mind that you know as an employer you do have you know, certain responsibilities under OSHA or Cal OSHA to protect the safety of your employees. And so you may need to think about things, reasonable steps that you can take to make the workplace safe from coronavirus or COVID-19. Maybe that's extra cleaning. Uh, maybe it's, you know, providing masks if you decide that that's something that you want to make available. But what steps can you do to help your employees stay safe in the workplace? cleaning down surfaces, thing like that. You, you need to at least think through your obligations in that regard. Okay. How about employer testing? Is that permitted? 
uh, for the coronavirus? What do you guys think on that issue? <laughs> what do you think, Anthony? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a tricky issue. I, I think it really depends on the context. Employers should approach that with caution. I wouldn't necessarily jump into the testing. One, I don't know, yeah, from what I understand, it's pretty hard to get the test to, to start out with. And to require the employee to prove they don't have coronavirus in order to work, I think it's another tricky issue because the employee might not be able to get that test done. Um, the government is rolling out a lot of tests, but um, right now, I think currently as of March 13th, there's a shortage on those, and it's really hard for people to get tested to prove they don't have it to come to work. So that could be problematic. Um, and also, I think if there's any kind of testing that the employer is doing, given this new Apple case that just came out about bag searches uh, and security screening, you know, to the extent there's any of these mandated tests of employees, it should be considered work time, and, and hourly employees should be compensated for that time. Uh, there's a, a likely argument that those employees um, are under the control of the employer during that time if it's required for work and should be paid. So and that can be as simple as, you know, if you want to be screening your employees coming in by, you know, asking them if they're okay or making them wash their hands, consider having them clock in before you start that process since the California Supreme Court case recently suggests that that may be compensable time. Yep, yep, it's a good point. Uh, and then the other question, unfortunately, it's been coming up is um, what if we have to lay off employees uh, given slowdown in work um, and so some of these shutdowns that are taking place. And so we've got the Federal uh, Warren Act in California that's called the Baby Warren Act um, comes into play. So in California, employers who have uh, employed at least 75 employees in the past 12 months, um, the California Warren Act applies. Under federal law, employers who have employed at least 100 or more employees in the past 12 months or employees 100 or more imp uh, workers who work at least a combined of 4,000 hours per week, not including employees who have worked less than six months, and also not including employees who work an average of less than 20 hours per week. Um, those employers under federal law are covered. Now, there are some exceptions uh, if, if um, the coronavirus creates um, a business hardship on the on the business, and they have to close and lay off some some employees. Um, there are some exceptions under California law. It's uh, <laughs> it's a little vague, but under um, this exception for physical calamity or act of war, employers don't have to give the 60 days notice under the Warren Act for layoffs. And um, whether the Corona Act or not. You know, is a physical calamity, um, I think is an open question. Uh, I think as this is developing and with the Trump's declaration today that it's a national emergency, it's probably getting closer to that, probably easier to justify that. Um, but employers should take a careful look at that. And uh, really the WARN Act is triggered in, in California. Um, you know, if 50 or more employees are laid off within a 30-day period, federal law uh, is a little different standard, but employers should take a look at that. And there are some exceptions, too, um, and it's very specific. Employers should look at if um, maybe business uh, operations are just affected so much. If people stop coming out to restaurants, stop buying product or services, that could be enough justification not to give the warn net notice, the 60 days notice, but it's a touchy issue employers need to be aware of and approach that with, with caution going forward. Yeah, and I think the big takeaway is, you know, if you have a situation where you're gonna be potentially laying off or terminating a substantial number of employees, you really wanna to talk to legal counsel rather than try to guess and, and assume because the penalties can be pretty substantial under Cal Warren, you know, the 60 days pay or civil penalties for failing to, no to notify the, the uh, EDD. So really, if you're in that kind of situation, you're going to want to talk to legal counsel. Yep, yep. And it's a pretty sophisticated process you have to go through with the no WARN notice. Notice to employees, you have to give notice to um, state and local government and agencies as well. So um, you have to be careful on that. So definitely talk to counsel if you're doing one of these major layoffs. Um, to comply with federal and state law on that issue. Um, so with that, I wanted to talk about two final issues. Um, what if 
your workplace does have a known case of coronavirus, do you, is there a notification obligation to other employees? What do you guys think? I'll throw that out to the, the group. I think if you do have a, a confirmed case, I would recommend that you should notify employees who may have come into contact with that employee of not the specific name of the person, but the fact that one employee has tested positive and that they should take precautions, including discussing it with the medical professional. Yep, yep, no, that's good. Um, Great, and then final issue, the wage and hour considerations. So we've talked about the leave that um, employees have to be granted with the school closures. Um, any other wage and hour issues that should be on an employer's mind for um, the, the, how coronavirus might affect the workplace? I would just say keep in mind the reporting time requirements if you are in abundance of caution to decide to send an employee home before they've use half their scheduled shift, make sure that if there's a reporting time trigger that that's paid and taken care of. Yep, that's a good point. And actually the um, State Labor Commissioner ca came out with an FAQ. We'll put it in a link in the description uh, below. Uh, employers can read that. It's a, a short FAQ about the coronavirus d disease um, and uh, some FAQs on the laws enforced by the California Labor Commissioner. So we'll make that link available below. And uh, so I appreciate all of your time putting this, this video together in quick, short notice uh, and getting this information out. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And um, we, um, yeah, we'll be monitoring the issue into next week and we'll provide any updates as well. Please stay tuned and let us know if you have any additional questions. Wash your hands. Wash your hands, <laughs> yep.